I'm Rajiv Sabarwal, and today I'm talking about the pharmacogenomics interactions of eripiprazole and CYP2D6. Eripiprazole is manufactured by Asuka of Japan in collaboration with Bristol Myers Squibb and is branded as Abilify in the market. It is an atypical antipsychotic drug with the given chemical formula as you see on the slide. Primarily used for the four disease conditions that you see listed out here. For schizophrenia, it seems to show some improvement in the verbal memory and the fluency while maintaining the efficacy and tolerability uh, as compared to the other antipsychotic drugs with a slight side effect of increased dizziness. For bipolar disorder, it is kind of neutral on the depression side, but on the mania side, it seems to have shown some improvement. For the major depression, it acts as, as an adjunct drug wherein it acts as the primer to the primary drug, okay, and shows significant mood elevation, which is the good part, and some weight gain, which is the bad part. For autism, it shows reduced irritability and increased hyperactivity on the positive side, weight gain, sleepiness, and increased tremors on the negative side. How does it work? Eripiprazole has affinity to four receptors, high affinity to four receptors, two dopamine, D2 and D3, and two serotonin, 5-HT1 and 5-HT2. For D2, D3, and 5-HT1, it acts as a partial agonist trap, wherein it blocks the connection of some other components with the protein to some extent on a partial basis, right? For the 5-HT2 receptor, though, located in the frontal cortex, it acts as a complete antagonizing drug and releases the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. It also interacts with some of the other receptors, such as histamine H1 and A1, which basically could be the reason for some of the uh, side effects. On the ADME side of it, it is a hepatic biotransformation, so it takes place in the liver. 4.9 liters per kg of plasma volume at steady state, 75 to 146 hours of half-life of the drug, 14 days to achieve the steady state, 99% binding with the protein, 1% excretion through urine, and 18% excretion through uh, stool. CYP2D6, is a part of the P450 family of genes and is found on the 22nd chromosome on the minus strand. It is involved in phase one metabolism of not only eripiprazole, but of almost 30% of the drugs available in the market. It is the only non-inducible enzyme among CYP family. Basically, it works on the principle of redepressor rather than increasing the gene expression. Highly polymorphic, over 90 variants available. Uh, broken down into four different categories. Ultra rapid metabolizers, which are primarily found in North African and Oceanic population. Extensive metabolizers, which is the wild type. Intermediary metabolizer, which is mostly Asiatic population, reflected in Asiatic population. And poor metabolizer, which is mostly reflected in the European uh, population. Specific to eripiprazole, it is responsible for two of the three stages of metabolism, dehydrogenation and hydroxylation. The third one is managed by CYP3A4. Uh, according to the Royal Dutch Ph Pharmacists Association, their DBWG group, who came out with the dosing, poor metabolizers of CYP2D6 are 80%, up to 80% higher exposed to the drug and 30% lower exposed to the active metabolizer, basically making it a 60% overall higher exposition. That led them to believe that the maximum dosage for eripiprazole for poor metabolizers of CYP2D6 should not exceed 67% of that given to the extensive metabolizer, which is 10 milligrams a day, not to exceed that. At the bottom, you see some of the alleles which are responsible for causing poor metabolism of CYP2D6. Any evidence? A lot of evidence. A lot of public studies for uh, IM and PM types of metabolizers, as well as control groups by some pharmaceutical companies, as well as some academic institutes, with given control groups and uh, all the clinical endpoints are desired, right? And CPIC came out with the dosing guidelines based on that. A lot of white papers available too. And one of them that I found quite interesting was by Kubo, Masanori, and the group, which basically talked or conducted a study for two different populations, Japanese population and Western population, and found that the ethnic differences were not much of an impact on the mean plasma PK, but the CYP2D6 star 10 influenced the eripiprazole PK significantly. Also, the overall finding is the poor metabolizers are 60% systemic clearance capacity compared to the extensive metabolizer. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time.